Ooh. Back. Back again. Um, oh, yeah. Another one. Uh, hope um, loads of people are watching. And uh, Oh, they are, mate. 210 views now, we are, I reckon. Should two, be. Two ten. If you are, tell everyone about it. Big numbers. So the opposite. Opposite of, uh, what's his name? Stephen Bartlett. That's it, Mr. Bartlett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Opposite, yeah. He yeah. loves it, doesn't he? He loves it. Loves it. But it's the way he goes. Oh, and that as well. I don't know if many of you notice, but I sit here and drink Huel, which is yeah. officially complete. Oh fuck! It. Come on, shut up. Yeah, it, I, I, I watched the and um, salt and caramel. It's just as good as any other milkshake yeah, that's out there on the market. Though, it? it won't be. It's not though, is it? Yeah. They had. Um, I watched one actually. It was really interesting. I recommend most online coaches watch. Actually, there's a guy with the marketing guy that was on there. So he, the guy was from Ogilvy Marketing, and he Steve Mott had, had him on. And he was talking about why certain things are the way they are in marketing and how it's all kind of playing on human psychology to a certain degree. And he talked about Huel because he got him to try it and he was obviously in the advert for it. And he said that um, the marketing behind Huel is he said it can't taste amazing because you wouldn't believe its health properties. Yeah. Like the marketing guy was like, there's this whole thing around it where it's like, they, they, Stephen Bartlett said that they went to a taste test thing and he said, oh, if we took out these few ingredients, we could make it taste loads better, but it wouldn't be nutritionally complete. And they were like, well, no, the whole thing is it should be nutritionally complete. And then the marketing guy was like, yeah, but of course, if you made it taste better, the people wouldn't believe it. And he was talking about how it's why Red Bull has to taste the way it tastes. He said, it doesn't quite taste, it's not as nice as like Coca-Cola, but yeah, it's smaller, double the price. Yeah. And it's got not that much more caffeine in, but he said, it's the taste that makes it feel as if it's somewhat medicinal. Yeah. And it's like, gonna ha it's going to have an effect on you. Yeah. And it was really interesting listening about the marketing side of stuff, because we'll do this in another video, actually. And he was saying how it's just about human psychology. Mm. And again, it was about how you're framing certain things. And he was like, um, he gave a really good example of that in NHS waiting times. He said, the way it's done is not good for human psychology. You just basically get told that you're waiting for this operation. He's like, whereas if you actually gave them the date and said, right, you've now got an eight week preparation period to prepare for your wait to for your operation you need to do these things in this over this eight weeks one thing each week mm. people wouldn't look at it as a waiting time they look at it as they're preparing for their operation mm. and he said sometimes a psychological switch can make people view things a little bit differently so same with coaching there's, there's a huge there's a massive application to to coaching in general as well which will what do you want to be a psychologist for they're all mad themselves <laughs> <I don't> know, <laughs> i'll be a psychiatrist actually so yeah yeah, yeah same no thing. psychologist same thing. Would, all right if you're so smart what am i thinking now um how can I kill a tiger I'm doing with a biro? <laughs> no, and you can't. <laughs> um, but no, it's interesting. You should go and go listen to it. Um, the podcast that he did with, um, I can't remember his guy's name now. S Rory Sutherland, maybe. Something like that. Anyway, we're done a mic. We're here to talk to you about um, online coaching. Marketing, somewhat related, so it's relatable. There you go. But, um, but yeah, we're here to talk shit about um, shit. our business, how we've done what we've done, and hopefully it might help you get you where you want to be. There you go. Um, so today we're going to talk about why you shouldn't take your foot off the gas and why a lot of people get very complacent quite early on with online coaching. They think they've cracked it when they get a few clients through the door. Yeah, it, really? it really, yeah, it irritates me. Like This is just basically, a, our YouTube channel now is just basically a rant of, of what annoys us, I think. It, yeah, <laughs> but I think people... It always need, has been. I think people need to hear it. So like, I, I put a post up, um, me and Dan have just been, been on holiday. Not together. Maybe we will. Maybe we That'd should have. Nice. Maybe we should have a holiday someday. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, we should actually do that. He doesn't invite me anywhere, so he's he's not actually my friend. He's just a work colleague. That's what he calls me. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take me take away somewhere romantic soon. I reckon. Yeah, we should actually just go on holiday time. together. We should go for a, a little getaway. Um, but we've just, we've lots, just lots, lots. yeah, we've just uh, it'll be a quiet night in at the library. Yeah, if you're just watching the office for yeah. a weekend. Probably. Yeah, it probably would be a quiet <laughs> night in the library. Um, yeah, yeah, no. So like, we've just been away. Um, for the for for the week, and um, it was it was my I don't know about you, but it was my first week off check-in since uh, aside from Christmas, because I think Doesn't Christmas count. is granted because clients are off as well. Like it's, it's mm -hmm. you know so the first week I've had off since last June, which is uh, fourteen months ago. So I've had fourteen months without any time off. Um, it's the first holiday I've had since before COVID. T time off work really week's holiday like actual holiday i think i've had time off work maybe like four days five days off maybe yeah so like i'm talking i'm talking like this literally the same as in time off work yeah i'm talking I'm getting talking. on a plane and going on holiday yeah first one f uh, for since before covid well i didn't get on a plane and go on holiday well i did but i went to england not a holiday is it it is a holiday technically but, yeah technically lakes it was very nice actually mm. um but uh but yeah so the the point is is that 
we've not taken any time off for over a year. I wouldn't recommend right. it, by the way. But yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so we've not we've not taken any time off, and um, I think that the reason why we've got to where we are is because, and we've spoke about this before, is is because of the work ethic that we have, and that we've been relentless with it, so that we never end up taking a step backwards, and. What winds me up so much and what I wrote on this Instagram post was was that people will get to 15, 20 clients and, you know, they're probably charging a good amount and then it's fucking celebration time. Mm-hmm. It's oh, popping bottles in the VIP section, I buy myself a new Gucci fucking T-shirt. And it's just from the outside, you just think, wow, like, what are you there's, doing? There's zero... There's zero plan. There's zero idea of what to do. It's, um, it's a it's a cele- it's a celebration though. Like it's just a celebration. Yeah. Like oh, I've made it now. I, I'm a I'm a success. And now I, I want to go and spend my money. Achieve my goals. Yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> so you're looking at me, thinking. Um, but but it's almost like I want to go and show Instagram how successful I am. I, I want to back off. Uh. Like and what what really does wind me up like is th- just the 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 laziness of it. It's the laziness where it's you get to twenty clients and you should be so fucking grateful that you've got that you've got to twenty clients. That the, there should be such a, a debt of gratitude there, but you should almost be be wanting to capitalize on that and go fuck yes. Like I've got an opportunity here where I've got twenty people. I can get them great results. I can leave a lasting impression on them. I can get some great testimonials. And I can build here, and I'm, I'm going to push a twenty five. and I'm going to push a thirty. And then I'm going to push a 35 and then I'm just going to sit between 30, 35. And then that, for all intents and purposes, could be me done if I choose it to be done. Mm-hmm. That is a unbelievable wage, great amount of workload. Um, but people just squander these opportunities. They get to 15, 20 clients because they've, they've had a good few weeks. And then they just back the fuck off of everything. Like, yeah. what? The, I think the problem, half the problem comes with it is that a lot of people are very emotional about their job and their work. And like we are, like I'm not going to sit and pretend like we're not, but we're getting better. You need to try and detach yourself from your business a little bit. And I think this is where those same people get very low with the lows. They get very high with the highs, but very low with the lows. And I always say to people, I, I try not to celebrate a client, you know, signing up four clients in a week. Because I'm like, yeah, but last four weeks, you got no clients each week. So we're averaging one a week. So that's good. Like that's what we're aiming for here. And I think sometimes people can get very... They, like I said, they get very excited and they see those numbers and go, oh, you know, that's it now. I'm making this much a month. It's like, well, you made it one month. Let's let's do it for three months in a row. Then we can say we do it. Um, and, and I think that these are the same people who get distraught when three clients leave. Yeah. And you have to be able to deal with both of those scenarios with the same level of emotion. In my opinion, you have to be able to look at it and rationalize it. Now, look, every time a client leaves, it's always a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a, a bit annoying and, and it gets you a little bit. But with each one that leaves, you get better at dealing with it. Like we're better now than we were two years ago for sure. Um, but I think that you want to be in a position really where when a client leaves, it doesn't really bother you. And I don't think many coaches are at that point. And to get to that point, you have to be on a decent number of clients and you have to be making a decent amount of money. And I just don't think people are setting themselves goals. I don't think people are setting themselves targets and they're not set like a business would. A business would have targets. They would have revenue targets. They would have KPIs. They would have all these things going on. They wouldn't have one month and go, right, let's spunk it all now. Yeah. They wouldn't. They just wouldn't do it. If you have a good month, you, sh- you should still be technically spending the same amount. You were m- the month before? Yeah. 100%. You, that and, and, isn't and money. And that's what Joe, so the financial advisor that, that we got into the members group, he gave that talk in the members group, mm-hmm. which is on recording. So if you join, you can watch it. Mm-hmm. And he, he said the same thing. He said, like, it's, it's, it's a business. And, and we were talking about how you should set yourself a salary. And that salary is set for, say, six to 12 months. You would then, in a normal job, have a review. And you would go, right, do I deserve more? Have I done well? Do I get a pay rise? Mm-hmm. You then get a pay rise and then the business doesn't like just pay you everything that they make. Mm-hmm. If, if that's how businesses work, they'd be all over the place. Yeah. And you need to do the same with yourself is your business is a separate entity to you mm-hmm. and your salary and what you get paid. Mm-hmm. And this is where coaches mess up a lot of the time. They take 100%. their foot off the gas. Then the next month they go, oh, I didn't get a good month this month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and then they panic, like you say. Yeah, it's, panic. It's, then they make a rash decision because yeah, they panic. Yeah. They don't stick to the plan. It's it's so fickle the way that it is as well. It's so knee jerk. Like I say, there's no plan in place. There's no like thought process. No um, like uh, it's, it's, it's like it's like you always talk about Coca Cola, right? And it's kind of like imagine Coca Cola having one month where their sales Coca Cola don't go great, and they go, 
oh, okay, so we're going to release Coca-Cola with uh, Mandarin now yeah. because we didn't get enough sales of that one. What makes yeah. you think that you're going to get more sales of that one then? Yeah. Like you wouldn't just make a knee-jerk reaction on one month. But, but coaches do. Coach, but coaches, coaches do, do this. Oh, I need a six-week program now. Yeah, yeah. A hundred percent is that, um, I tried this conversation yesterday, is that um, a, a coach came and had a consultation with me and he'd been up to 19 to 20 grand a month. Very, very good. Like great amount of money. Um, and things had, you know, dropped down a little bit. And it was like, what should I do? Well, you've just proved that you can get to 19 to 20 grand a month. That's an unbelievable amount of money. So do that. Do those things that you were doing. Mm. But often like the people, for some reason, coaches just think that they need, oh shit, nobody bought for the last two weeks, so I need to change something up. Well, no, that's not the it's case. It's a package now. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that is, we're going to, <laughs> fucking rinse that um but it you don't need to do anything different you need to do the same things consistently well over time and take the fluctuations some weeks you are going to get nobody in some weeks you are going to get drop-offs that's completely par for the course like it fluctuates that's it but if you're as fickle like if, if i ask you the question would you be happy if you got three clients in this week and you said yes well you're not probably in a bad place then if the answer is yes, if you went and got three clients. So go and do the things that require you to get three clients. Like you've got to, you've got to go and do those things. But people are just so all over the place and it's almost like reactionary type living. Like they, they get, have a good month and like you say, you, they spunk it on a few things and the next month they panic. That's no position to be in. Also as well, what happens is people slow down on doing the things that got them there. So for example, they'll, they'll have a great month and it's probably because they put out loads of good content the month before. They put out consistent CTAs every week, emailed their list twice a week. Well, they don't need the, to do it now. These are all the things you should be doing, by the way. Yeah. Then they get the, that influx of clients and they go, oh, I won't bother with that email this week. Yeah. I won't bother with we're putting out content every day. I'll just do it four or five. Yeah. Out of, I won't bother with the CTA because I've kind of got enough clients this, this month, so I'm all right. And then no one comes in that month. And then what happens is because you're always a month behind on social media. So like you, the, whatever happens this month is a direct result usually of what you did last month. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a delay in it. So what happens is they don't get anyone in this month because they've slowed down a little bit. Or they might get a, a couple because again, they, they've, they put the, the time and effort in the month before. But then what happens is a few of those people then, the older people might be drop off. Oh shit, shit, need some new clients. Then they start putting the content out, but then they have a month where it's a lull because they haven't been doing it consistently. And it's just that the second they get more clients in, that stuff drops down. And the way you organize your week should be that those contents, those content creation days, those days you write emails, those days aren't the same days as you do your client check-ins. So if you do get more clients, you just are busier on your check-in days. It shouldn't affect your ability to put out content and put out all these things. Again, how you structure your business, it shouldn't affect it. But people do because people are so all over the place with their check-ins. They let their clients check in whenever they want. They just move their clients around on different check-in days and they don't have a system. It means that their content does suffer. When we were growing to where we are now, we didn't stop putting our content. We didn't stop doing CTAs. We didn't stop doing transformations because it was all there because it was done on other days. And that's one of the biggest problems that I see with, with people is the second they start getting a bit busier is that they drop the ball on all the yeah, stuff that's they dropped drop the them ball. there. You need to be a step in front. Why not be a step in front? Why don't you, when you've got momentum, keep doing it? Mm. Keep doing it and be a step in front. Like, because too many people just fall steps behind and then that's where panic comes in. And then that, that's and where it's, irrational it's, decisions come in. Like the thing say. is, it's hard as well because it comes back to this whole thing of being your own boss. Because if you did have a boss, they would hold you accountable to all the stuff that got you to where you were. Mm -hmm. Again, like all these big companies, they keep doing the things that got them where they are. Even when they get busier with new clients, they don't stop doing all the other stuff. There's a thing when you're your own boss, it's easy to let yourself off and go, yeah. oh, I won't bother this week. Don't need to worry about it. And again, look, we all fall for it. We all have those weeks and days where we do that. But it's also a difference between being completely genuinely full and busy and, and being okay with it. And like Mike said, when you've got 20 clients or you've had, you know, you're a decent number, but you're still a way off from where you want to be really. Yeah. It's like, why would you stop? Why would you let up? Like a 20, a 20 client business is not like, um, I would say that's not a stable business. I wouldn't say that at 20 clients, I would, I mean, it's, don't, don't get me wrong. It's a great income. Like if you're charging, you know, 150 to 200 pounds a, a month, still a, still a great income. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it's not stable because you are only a week away from having a couple of people drop off. Like you, yeah. you are at any one point, you don't know what's going to happen. Economy, fucking a lockdown, you, you know, people who you've been coaching come to the end of, I guess, a term, you know, they're just yeah. at a natural breaking point or whatever. Somebody's social, you know, somebody's personal life, you know, they might get pregnant or whatever, lose their own job. Yeah. 
you're you're only a week away. You're you're only a day away from having a couple of people drop off. And if it's the same as like with fat loss. So how I used to coach fat loss is if somebody was happy at seventy kilos, let's just say, you wouldn't stop at seventy kilos. No. We would stop at sixty seven. Mm-hmm. Because then you go, okay, well, now you've got that little bit of wiggle room to gain a little bit and you can now fluctuate between 67 and 70 because then you're always, by definition, happy. If you stopped at 70, in three weeks' time, you're going to be 72, 73 and unhappy again. Then you need to lose some weight to get down to a happy place. Mm -hmm. You need to push past it so that your settling point can then kind of settle around the margin where you want it. So, like with us, we pushed up to, in our first year, 25 to 30 clients and we were somewhat within 25 to 30 clients. Always, because we push past the point where we would need to earn an amount of money to feel stable or comfortable or whatever, and then the same margins happened when we when we left you know team box or whatever we set, set up our own thing. The same thing happened again, is that we pushed the envelope a little bit to be a step ahead, and then you can decide where you settle. Then you can decide where you're happy. Whereas people will just go like it's fucking crazy to me that people just stop. They just stop operating. I've seen it. Like a a lot with coaches that I coach, like mm-hmm. I've seen it a lot. They'll get a couple of people in, and they that's it. Foot is off the gas. Like fucking yeah. happy days. I got I got an extra six hundred quid this month. Just get complacent. That is not how you're going yeah. to run a business like that. Yeah, people just get really complacent with it, and and I think that they think once they get two clients for the door, they've cracked it as well. Oh, that means I can get clients in now consistently. All I got to do is keep doing what I'm doing. And I said that I've said this on so many times on check ins that I, I feel like I'm broken record. People sign up when they're ready, not when you're ready. So you think that because of the content you've put out, people signed up. It's not. It's because you put it out consistently for long enough and you put out enough CTAs, people knew how to get in touch with you so that when they were ready, you were the right person for them. Mm -hmm. And what happens is coaches, when they get a bit busier, they stop putting out CTAs. People just stop. Oh, okay. Maybe they're full. I won't reach out then. I won't bother. Mm -hmm. That's the time you should be. I don't want to look too salesy. Don't look too salesy. Fuck, you know. Wow. But then you also moan when you have two people drop off. So like yeah. at the same time, what, what do you want there? And this whole exclusivity thing as well. I, I, that, 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 that winds me up. The whole, I don't want to be salesy thing. So I'm like, this is your fucking business. Yeah. This is your livelihood and you don't want to appear salesy. Oh, it was usually combined with the people that go, I don't want to be on social media too much. Well, yeah. But when you go back to the Coca-Cola thing and go, well, there's an advert for Coca-Cola on fucking- Everywhere. Everywhere. I don't want to appear too salesy. Don't put those billboards up. No, yeah. don't, don't be too desperate. Yeah, don't, don't put them on the uh, around the, the the signs on a football stadium. Don't don't do that. Don't put them. Out. Don't put any adverts on TV. Don't yeah. put that out because we don't want to look like we want to sell too much to people. Apply this whole that logic thing, to other things, and you just realize how whole, stupid. It yeah, sounds. this whole thing with coaches. I just don't want to look, you know, like I'm desperate for clients. But you are desperate for clients. Yeah. So you not advertising that you've got spaces is what's harming you. Yeah. Like it's this all now. I want to look exclusive. But you're not. You're not exclusive. You're not exclusive. Yeah. Do you know what makes it look exclusive is when you are exclusive? Yeah. yeah. Do you know, and what makes you exclusive is having more clients in. Yeah. So how are you going to get more clients in? Well, tell people more that you've got coaching space available. Tell people more. Uh, it's Nothing is like, it, it, do, it does inherently feel a little bit like, oh, am I selling too, too much? But we've been, in a, and again, this is the whole point of this YouTube video, I guess, like why we're doing stuff is to tell you what how we felt and what we've done. We've run launches for for Blitz, our, our eight, eight weeks fat loss and things like that, and spoke spoke every single day for two or three weeks about it, pushed it. Like we have an email sequence that is like two weeks daily emails re, uh, leading up to it, three on the last day, and it does feel a little bit like oh, it's a little bit salesy, but you're selling something, so it should do. It yeah. should feel sales. I've also been on the, other, on, on the receiving end of those from people that I follow and I like, or I wasn't going to buy their products and it doesn't bother me. No. Like I've been, I've been on, I've been following people with copywriters and stuff who've got something to sell and maybe I've, I don't need it. And I, but I want to stay on the list because I like what they do and I'm, I appreciate they've got something to sell. I just ignore the emails. And I think it's always that thing of when you're doing it and you've got the plan, you feel like people are looking at it the same way you are, but they're not in your head. They're not thinking about you all the time. Yeah. They just, they'd see the little snapshots once a day that you're selling something. Trust me, they don't, they don't get as pissed off as you do. The, the, the thing, the thing that I think people have a problem is, is they don't want to appear sleazy. So they associate sales with sleaze. And for a percentage of the, the industry, there is sleazy sales. There's, you know, trying to make people cry on consultation calls. There's, you know, the phone and, the, yeah, there's pressure yeah. tactics and things like that. There's yeah, payment on the phone, whatever. So there is an element of that, but, you don't attribute all sales to sleaze because your sale could change somebody's life. So you owe it 
to the client, the potential client, you owe it to them to sell to them because if if they are in the market for online coaching, but by the way, you're not going to force anybody by a CTA on your Instagram. That's not going to, you're not forcing them. You're not going and twisting their arm physically. You're just saying there's space available. That isn't, that's not forcing anybody into anything. All you're doing is to the people that are in the market for an online coach, you're just saying to them, I'm available if you need me. And by you doing that, you might be saving them from inquiring with another coach who could it sounds drastic but ruin their life like I've, I've, I've had clients come to me who've got eating disorders from previous coaches so you know you could save somebody money you could stop them from developing eating disorder you could leave a better taste in the mouth about what online coaching is like it is your duty to sell what you do if you are good at it so sales isn't a sleazy thing provided it's done in the right way you're doing it for the best interest of the person watching and you have spaces available so if if you're sat here watching this and you don't think like you come across salesy, maybe try to come across slightly more salesy. People think it's sleazy, like I said. Then my, my question to that person when they say that is, okay, so what are you selling then? Because if you feel like it's sleazy, you must be selling shit. Mm. Are you selling shit? No, I'm not. So what, why is it sleazy then? Yeah. Like you said, you can help these people. You can help them get to where they want to be. And that's the thing I find odd about it is, again, it's, it's your livelihood. You're not, you're not selling Herbalife door to door. That yeah. would be sleazy. And alongside your full-time job, that would be sleazy. This is your livelihood. This is your job. This is your profession. This is your vocation. It's your career. It's what you've put all this money into. It's what you've learned about. It's what you are passionate about. And you're now not prepared to tell people this is what you do. <laughs> Come on. Like, it, 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 think of it like that. Like, just... And again, like, I think the reason people don't like it is because they do see people who are sleazy, who are selling shit in a can, who are selling dodgy shit, that they sell all the time. And we're not asking you to sell all the time, we're just asking you to sell more than what you're doing now. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have to be ramming it down people's throats three times a day. No. But maybe once every other day would yeah. be good. Like just to say to people, like, hey look, I do work with people, I do coach them, I do make them feel incredible. Um, and like you always said to me, right at the start when we start working together, you're the best option for these people. They don't, they, and, and if you don't tell them that, they don't know. Mm-hmm. And they won't, they, you're not given the opportunity to sign up with you. and if you genuinely believe that you're the best coach for them and you're genuinely the best coach for your niche, you owe it to these people to tell them, to sell to them, to sell them what, what it takes and what, what you do and how to sign up and all these things. And if, you're don't, if you're not doing that, it tells me you don't believe in what you do. Mm-hmm. That's what it tells me as a, as, a, as, a, as a coach, as someone who's able to help you. Do you believe in what you're selling? Do you believe that what you're doing is the best thing for them? What, what, what you're looking at it is, is that you're on a fishing boat and what you're expecting- not literally. Yeah, yeah, this is going somewhere. <laughs> what you're expecting people to do is you're expecting the fish to jump into the boat for you. That's what you're expecting people to do. Whereas you need to have a rod in the water with some bait on it. You, you need to have something in the game where you can get a nibble, where you can get a bite. I've got coaching space available. Oh, here's the behind the, 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 the scenes shot of how I'm working with my clients. Here's what they've said about me. You know, there is space available. Like, that's what you need to do. The fish are not going to jump out of the fucking water into the boat for you. That's what you're expecting to do. You put out four Instagram posts a week and you're expecting people to flock in. You've got to give them something to flock to. Like, it's it's madness. And it is a restriction or a, limit, a limiting belief that a lot of coaches have. The biggest things that I see problems with, and you will, you'll, you will agree with me on this, because uh, I tell you to, um, is they are not... Well... In fact, there's loads. Their content is shit. It, that's one. Their content is shit. Number two, they're not consistent enough. Number three, they don't talk to enough people on Instagram because, again, they feel sleazy. To feel sleazy talking to people. Mm-hmm. Cool. If they don't want to talk to you, they just won't talk to you. Yeah. Again, like, it's fucking... You're it's simple. Them, yeah. yeah, yeah. And and they don't do enough CTAs. They, like, yeah. those four things. If you do more CTAs, you have more conversations, you post more consistently and it's not fucking boring generic i'm an online coach and it's something you know uh, authentic and relevant to your niche you do those four things your business will be better off in two months Mm -hmm. like straight away no doubt and and the, the the other thing that people come back to and they think it's sleazy is because they only do it when they need clients yeah so this is the other thing is it should just be part and parcel of your daily business on social media on email on whatever 
if you only ever do CTAs when you need clients, of course it's going to feel sleazy. Of course you're going to feel that way. And this comes back to, this, to the point of the video is not taking your foot off the gas. It's just when you get clients does not mean that you should stop doing CTAs. You should only do CTA when you need clients. You should be doing CTAs all the time. Oh. It should be a fixture in your social media twice yeah. a week. I don't care how busy you are. I don't care how many clients you've got because that that's when you will grow because... Mm -hmm. If you only ever do it when you need clients, you're always going to be always in this sink, you're always going to be in this sink and swim scenario, and you don't want to be there. You want to be on a fucking boat with your fucking feet up, knowing that things are going all right. You don't want to be fucking swimming in the water, right? It's that whole thing of get out of that mindset of I'll only do CTs when I need clients because then of course you're going to feel sleazy, of course you're going to feel desperate, of course it is. You should be doing it like we just said about Coca-Cola all these things. They don't stop their marketing when they've hit their sales target. They don't. They keep going. Mm -hmm. Of course they do. What's the next sales target we can get? What's the next thing we can reach? And until you're at that holy grail of of like seven k months in in the online fitness world, because that is the VAT threshold in the UK, where you will there's no point going above that unless you jump over it. And again, if you need help with that, messages because that's there's no point doing a video on that because it's quite specific. But there's until you're at that point, that's when you may not want to grow all the time after that point, right? But to get to that point, you, you just keep doing the same things over and over again and you don't stop because you've had three signups in a week. You just doesn't, you don't stop because of that. Think about it logically. How do you expect your business to grow if you're only selling when you've lost clients? Yep. Just think about, think what, about, think about yep. what that sentence means. How can you expect your business to grow if you're only taking on clients? Prime example is like when you, it's like going to the gym um, because you feel like you've... Um, like, oh, well, I should probably go in two weeks' time because oh, it's probably the mid bare minimum I need to do to grow muscle. Or it's like you only go to the gym after you've had a pizza. Yeah. It's like Ridiculous, when you're fucked up yeah. or when something negative has happened, yeah. you're trying to remedy it with a positive. Yeah. You're never going to get a step in front. Like people say to their clients, like, oh, don't... Um, you know, like people say, don't earn your don't earn your pizza, don't go to the gym. And they're yeah. like, you always just say, cheat me or like, yeah, yeah. shit on your bonnet. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's... it's and when you put it in those terms, coaches go, oh yeah, that does make sense. You're like, yeah. You are right. Yeah, you yeah. are right. You are the best. best. So, yeah. you know. But it's true. It, 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 don't do it that way. Don't be reactive. You should be proactive. You should yeah. have a plan. You should be, know what you're doing. Be a step ahead. Like Honestly, be a step ahead. Like, it just baffles me that it, it could all be avoided. It could all be avoided if you just give yourself six months, 12 months, and you are relentless with it. And, and, and what you do once you get to that point where you're kind of full with clients and you can't take on any more clients, you then create a separate product. So you're still doing CTAs, you're still driving people to something, but it's something different. Our right? CTAs, you've seen it, it's in this, it's our member site. That's why we can't take on one-to-one -one clients currently as we sit here right now. But there's a CTA for something going on. Mm -hmm. We're trying to take people off social media into our network for future. Like, we don't go, okay, well, that's us now. So... Yeah. When, when should we do another CTA? Well, well, when, we've, when, we, when we've lost yeah. five or ten clients, yeah. That's when we do it. No, 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 no. That's, that's when you don't do it because that's when you've got less money. That's when you are panicking. That's when you do have scarcity. You that, make wrong decisions. Uh, yeah, you make wrong, you wrong make decisions. decisions based on and then you're just trying to get back to where you were. Yeah. No, be a step ahead. Mm -hmm. So uh, build a waiting list. The fucking build another product. Group, 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 group program. Group, group program. Yeah. Like those types of things are what's going to see you progress longer term and again this is a career this is what's going to send you into retirement think about think about this do you actually think that this is going to set you up for retirement because if, if you do you should be working fucking hard mm -hmm. like you should be working a damn sight harder than what you are now think about your future think about when you can't work at 60 what's going to what's going to support you between 60 and 80 what money what money is going to support you but yet you get five clients you back the fuck off and you spend it on shit now like Mm. It sounds boring to say what you're going to do between 60 and 80, but that that's 20 years of your life mm -hmm. where you've got to pay yourself a wage. Where I think you'll wish you were more salesy <laughs> back when you could have been. <laughs> what, what what was it? It was I saw I saw something the other day that um, about the average um, savings or some something like that for um, for pension, and obviously with inflation, um, you're saying obviously if you average out inflation to two and a half percent a year you'll need um roughly about a million pounds in your bank yep. by the time that we are at time and age now <laughs> so you'll need roughly about a million pounds in the bank to survive for 20 Just, years yeah for 20 years yeah, yeah. because of inflation mm -hmm. so think about what that means people won't know what that means they won't uh, no they won't and and i think it it might scare some people to think like that as well and all that sort of stuff but this is one of the things that people don't talk about and maybe you should do a separate video on this entirely but when you're employed and you've got your company paying your pension and you do that for that many years you don't really think about it because you don't really see it 
you, you will now you have to think about it because you're self-employed you you're you're in charge you're the boss you have to do all this stuff and it's boring like i said it's boring but when you get those three new signups rather than see it as oh i'm going to spunk on that money now why don't you just get right okay that's another that's another month when i'm 60 that i don't have to worry about it like again it's a bit morbid to think it like that way but i think the other the other thing that the way that i'm looking at it especially I'm, i know mike's probably the same is that the way i look at it now is kind of like actually can i retire a year earlier can I earn a bit more and can I retire a year earlier? Alex can Orm- I get to the point where actually I go, when I'm 50, I retire rather than 60 or whatever it is. Alex Ormosi does a really good, um, I guess, uh, has a really good way of thinking about this. Is that if you earn, for ease of maths, let's just say 100 grand, which is a lot, I, I get, you know, uh, I get that. But if if you spend 50 grand and you live off 50 grand, you're saving a year of retirement there because that's money yeah. that you can live off to support the exact same amount of uh, expenditure that you're doing now, right? Mm -hmm. If you only spend 25 grand out that year, you've then saved three years of retirement. So if you start to save, let's just say, three years for every year that you're living, you can then retire so much further down the line because you've then proved that you can can live off that 25 grand and that's going to sustain you. So, I mean, let's just, if we did quick maths on that, so let's just say for over 10 years that you did that, you've then saved yourself 30 years of income, mm. which you then go, okay, let's just say I'm going to die at 80, again, morbid, go, well, I can retire at 50 then. Technically, I can retire at 50 if I'm only going to ever spend 25 grand a year for ease of maths. Yeah. Um, and that's how it would work. But people will get in and look, I've been guilty of it. 100% I've been guilty of it. And that's why we're saying it as well, because we've been guilty yeah, of it. Like, been guilty of it. Yeah. Fucking happy days. Wow. Mm. Fucking brilliant. Look at look at this money. I can spend this and I can spend that. I've definitely been guilty of it. And But that's why, yeah, we're a little bit further down the line and go, wow, you are going to get a little bit older. And you then start to think, okay, well, what are we doing? You know, what what is the best thing to do? This has gone off on a massive tangent. Yeah, the whole point is, is that you don't take the foot off the gas on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, if you're in on that, again, we talked about that with Joe on that call though, in that, you know, the financial call, we talked about yeah. those sorts of things because again, he, he talked about it in depth and it's stuff that I think an online coach, when you think about it, again, the longitudinal effects of your decision-making today it does make sense to then, and, and it's easier from an emotional point of view to think logically, I mm-hmm. think, if you think about it like that, rather than just, oh, this month I made this, let's go buy a t-shirt that costs 400 quid. What a waste of money that would be. Like, you can't afford it, like, mm-hmm. quite clearly. Don't spend it yet. Um, and again, it's all based on your own values, and, and I think within that talk, we also talked about enjoying life a bit and spending some money, but again, it's all relevant to, the to thing, what you say. The thing that, makes pe- that prevents people from getting rich is trying to look rich. Mm-hmm. It's something that I, I heard. I mean, I, I... And by trying to look rich, you make everybody else rich around you. So I heard something that was I thought was quite good, is that when you go and spend money in Gucci or Louis Vuitton, you make Gucci and Louis Vuitton richer. Mm-hmm. And you're actually poorer. Yeah. But you look, but, but your perception is that you look richer. You don't. You make, you're making other people look rich. Mm-hmm. Matter. Yeah, and, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky that I've never been, I've never been one for brands and things like that anyway to me it's like it's a t-shirt it doesn't matter if it costs fucking 20 quid or 100 quid mm. don't bother me like and i i like that's the i love steve jobs mark zuckerberg that whole they just dress like normal clothes mm. Stephen bartlett talked about this he's talking about when he does his talks he just goes up on in joggers and a t-shirt yeah rather than a suit and it's like it's almost a bit of a power play it's like i'm that rich i don't need to yeah, yeah. and i'd rather be that i'd rather i'd rather try and attempt to look like that even though i'm not yeah <laughs> but like to me it doesn't matter like you i don't almost care. see that the richer that people are the less the less brands the, the less, less brands yeah, yeah. G- genuinely they'll yeah. like walk about in converse and things like that you know timeless stuff like yeah, converse yeah. jeans t-shirt whereas it's the people who don't have as much money yet. They might have a bit of money, but they don't have as much money yet who want to be perceived to have more that's money. My, that's my view of it. That's yeah. the way I look at it. And, and and I think, again, like we talked about before, where... Suck talks a lot about this, doesn't he? Growing your business and growing, yeah, that side of stuff. Yeah. He talks about, like, the personal trainer that earns or the, the person that earns five grand and saves it and there's a person that earns five grand and spends it. The person who spends it looks richer, but the person who it's saves more. it is richer. Yeah. They get a lesson there. See... This is the kind of gold you get in our members group in the, in the course. Kind of, we go off on tangents all the time. Um, How we are going to describe what this video is about, I've got no, no idea. No idea, but it's, it'll be useful for someone to watch, yeah. I'm sure. How long is it going? Two Over half an hour? 35. 35, oh, that's wow. a this long time. we chopped time. into two, I reckon. We'd have Do you reckon we could chop into two? We must be able to at some point. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I, say, I say we. Do you reckon you'll be able to chop into two? <laughs> yeah, we'll leave it there. <laughs> right, until next time. Have a good one. Yeah, members group. <laughs>